Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to model a wine glass. So we had a short come out a little bit ago where Matt went through and uh, quickly, less than a minute, did a wine glass and then actually put wine in it, and uh, it looked great with the reflection and everything. So um, I figured let's do that again. Well, let's walk through step by step. So you can see exactly how it works. And I know I get this all the time. Well, why would I model a wine glass? Why can't I just download one from 3D Warehouse or import one? You already showed me how to bring in USDZ files. Sure, absolutely true. Go for it. Awesome. Uh, but if you want to practice modeling, if you want to learn how to get to the point where you can model specific things exactly as you need them, or even if you do rely on existing content through 3D Warehouse or some other format, there's lots of chances that you're going to have to, or lots of situations where you might have to fine tune and change that. What if the glass you download looks great, but it's the wrong size? It needs to be taller, smaller, shorter, wider. I need a goblet versus a flute versus a whatever. That's why we do these videos. So you get the skills, not just learn to model the specific thing that we're looking at. In this case, it's going to be a wine glass with some wine in it. Let's do it. All right. So here I am. Uh, I'm going to model large scale and then we can come back and scale it afterwards, of course. Um, this is going to be a radial follow me. So it's going to be like a, a lathe thing. It's going to spin around the middle. I like to do these things at the origin. Not a requirement, but by starting at the origin, I know one point. So <laughs> it's easy to find that middle point. So I'll, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle coming off of that origin point like that. Now, I get this question a lot. Couldn't I have used rectangle to go here to here? Yes. Why didn't I? It's muscle memory, I guess. I literally, literally did not think about what I was doing there, you guys. I just started drawing lines. So uh, yeah, rectangle works great. Um, I love Tom. Tom, you're my buddy, but uh, I don't need you here for this. You can step away. All right. So what we're going to draw on this is a half of a wine glass. So I'm going to have the, the base here. It's going to come up and have the stem like this. It's going to flare out and then come back. And I just want to draw that half. Um, there are... I don't have to tell you, there's, I don't know how many different versions of wine glasses there are out there. Uh, I'm going to draw a shape that looks like a wine glass. I apologize if the wine glass you had in mind is different from the one that I create. Um, so I'm going to do this as I usually do, just starting with some square shapes kind of like this. Um, I do this just because it helps me visualize. I'm not going to do an off. I'm not going to do the inside here because I'll, I'll, I'll use this geometry I have right here to kind of create the actual shape of the glass. Um, start down here. Let's, let's get this on here. So I'm going to, I want to fully round over the bottom here. Actually, I probably want to like take this down a little bit. I don't need to be quite so big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a circle right here and bring that up like that. And then that's how I get kind of a rounded end right there. And then I'm going to use an arc from about here down to here. I'm going to try to get tangent to both. So I wait for it to turn purple. And then that purple is means it's in tangent to this line and tangent to this. line. So like that. There we go. So now we're going up. Do the same thing here. I'm going to do a smaller arc right here to here. Wait for tangent. Double click. All right. We're getting there. Now, I want this to kind of scoop up in one direction. So I want my first arc to come up like this. And then my second arc is going to come over to a very different arc back up to about, about here. So um, again, I'm not tracing off an image. I don't have a specific look in mind, but about like that. That looks great. And I'm going to go from the edge of that. I'm going to come up to here and double click there. Okay, so that gives me, that's the arc I was thinking of. That looks exactly like what I want. I'm going to take both of these edges now and I'm going to weld them together. So I have a single curve here and offset that, uh, you know, nice and thin. I don't want I don't want a big chonky wine glass. I want thin, delicate. I'm gonna take this edge straight across like that. And then up here, a couple things I could do. I'm gonna put a line across there. I don't want that sharp edge, of course. I want that to round over. So I'm gonna grab another circle, probably not 24 sides. I'll do something like 12 sides. I don't need, you know, 20, 12 edges here to define what will be a super small, smooth little piece of geometry you won't even see. And there we go. So that, that looks like a pretty good outside. Now, something I want to point out 
I have gotten to this point often where I think that's it, that's perfect. And then I do my radial array and go, wow, I made a dog bowl instead of a wine glass. So I want to be conscious of that. Um, I'm just going to grab a copy of this and just set it over here. So if this goes horribly wrong and I end up deleting the whole thing out of spite, I can always jump back over to this one. So now I'm going to put a circle on the floor. I do want to be conscious of how many edges I have on the circle because this circle is going to define how smooth my wine glass is. So right now it is 24 sides. If this is the thing that's sitting off in the background, that's fine. Uh, if this is like a hero item, I might want to go a little bit more. Maybe I want to double that up to 48, something like that. Um, but I'm going to take that edge then and I'm going to use that for a follow me with the shape I just made. And there we go. There we got our wine glass. Not too bad. A couple things I want to, I'm going to undo that and redo it. There's a couple things I don't like about what I just did. Um, the glass is fine. I think the stem needs to be a little longer and the foot or base needs to be a little bit smaller. So I'll fix that. The other thing I'm noticing here is these edges. See this edge right here, this edge right here is, nope, not one underneath, this edge in here. I don't need all those edges, right? I want that to all be smooth. So I could smooth it out after I did the following like this, or I can go back and I can undo and I can clean that up here. So let's do a couple of those things. So I'm going to grab this piece right here. I'm going to make that base just a little bit smaller like that. I want to make the, the stem a little bit bigger. So I'm going to just raise it up just a bit like that. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to grab all these edges as I come around here and I want to right click and weld them all. So I have this edge right here, which is the straight stem that gets obliterated. That goes away when I do the follow me. And then everything else is a single edge. This is going to mean when I select this and I follow me, boom, it's all in one. Okay. So that looks pretty cool. I like that. Um, I can, I can get rid of everything else and move forward with this, with this geometry. I don't have to, I mean, I could, obviously I could just come in and, uh, keep those other pieces, but I'm going to throw it all away. <laughs> so I'm throwing care to the wind. All right. So I'm going to do one more thing here before we move on with materials. I want to put a face in here that represents the top of the wine. So right now this represents an empty, empty wine glass. Um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to triple click and make this a group. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle over here on the ground. I'm going to take that rectangle and I'm going to put it there. This is the, this is going to be inside. This is the level of the wine. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. Uh, this is all one face or, or one surface. So when I intersect, what I want to do is I want to intersect this face with this outside piece, but I really only want it to intersect on the inside, right? I don't want it to intersect on the outside too, because it's one face, because I welded it and have it all be one face. I don't have the ability to say only intersect this plane with this piece, unless I create a face that fits in between those two. Since I didn't do that, uh, it's not a huge deal. I'm just going to right click. I'm going to say intersect face with model, and it's going to hit where any place that hits on the outside, it's going to show up there. Um, and then what I can do is I can come in here and I can get this edge. And if I delete it, it's going to obviously look bad. So let's do this. Let's do this. Make this easier. I'm going to come get rid of this plane. I'm going to come in here. And I'm just going to option copy and just erase around this edge real quick. Uh, we don't need this. We do need the one on the inside, right? Because the one on the inside is going to actually break that and make a new surface. So let me real quick just erase these outside edges. Um, I might be able to come up with a cool select trick to select all these and delete them at once, but it's a quick enough thing to just erase around the edge. There we go. All right. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an edge from here to here. That's going to give me a face right there, which is going to be the top of my actual wine. So I'm going to go ahead and let's reverse it. So it's facing down. All right. So there we go. So we have basically an all white default material version of my wine glass. Now that doesn't work very good, right? Because glasses are clear. They're not white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by grabbing my materials over here. I'm just going to take the default glass material right here and I'm going to click. Oh, wait, I want to explode this back out. All right, there we go. Now we're working with surfaces. 
I'm going to click right here on this surface. And there we go. We get a nice, looks like a wine glass full of milk right now. That's fun. Um, but we got that. We got our, our clear material on here. It's going around. I'm still seeing edges here. We'll take care of the edges in a second so we don't have that. that I mean, stylistically, maybe that's good. But for me, I want to get rid of that at some point. That looks good. And like I said, it looks like we have milk in our glass. So let's take that a step further and put some uh, dark red liquid in here. We could do any color really, but uh, let's get something reflective in here. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to hit the, oh, nope. Hey, I need that back. I'll bring that back here. We're going to go to home. This is going to show me the materials that are in the model and see, here's my glass material. I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate that. Um, Last basic, and we'll just call it red. Okay. Now I'm going to double click on that new material. Here's our red. And I'm going to go over to the color wheel and I'm going to slide that all the way over to red. I'm, yeah, a, a darker red, something like that. And then I'm going to up the opacity a little bit. Um, it is a fairly clear liquid, but I want it to, I want it to, you know, look like it's a little more thick than, you know, just clear water. So, I'm going to up it a little bit, like 49, 50%. And then I'm going to fill, excuse me, I'm going to fill, I'm going to come in with my material. I'm going to fill and I'm going to use my modifier key. So if I look, if I look down at the bottom, you're going to watch that, that material. So I'm going to say uh, all matching or all connected in this case. And I'm going to click on one white surface and it's going to hit all of them like that. So now we have that material. Look at that. That looks cool. That looks very cool. And you see it, it is slightly, slightly more opaque than the clear glass. The clear glass is like 20%. This is like 50%. So it obscures a little bit of that back there. I could probably go on a little bit darker. Maybe this is a nice, nice uh, rosé. I don't know. I really don't know much about wine. But uh, there we go. So that gives me the material inside separate. Um, if I wanted to change the color of that, I want to change it to like lighter or yellowy or something like that. Uh, I can use that same command to color the connected material. So uh, yeah, pretty quick, pretty easy. The last thing we're going to do, I'm going to select all of it like this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say deselect faces. That's going to give me just all the edges, which I can then turn off so then we get that, that nice look. So these, these other dark edges that are showing up around here like this, these are actually profiles. So if I go into my style and say edit and go to edges, I can turn off profiles and then that gets rid of that. So with that, with that like that, let's move it off of the origin. So I don't have that blue line in the middle. That's unappetizing. There we go. So now I have just that glass of wine, just the materials that make up the glass and the liquid inside. You can see it's reflective bouncing back the light. It's bouncing back the materials around and uh, yeah, pretty quick, pretty easy. And hopefully a, uh, uh, you know, if you, if you're, if you weren't up to following the one minute short we did on this, hopefully those steps listed out well enough that you could follow along and make one for yourself. So lots of stuff in there. We talked about follow me. We talked about editing profiles before and after we do follow me's making those adjustments, uh, picking a material, editing a material, applying materials to faces. So if you're not a wine glass modeler, I don't know that there's a whole lot of those out there to be honest, but if that's not a thing you do and it's part of your workflow, hopefully one of those other steps you picked up and uh, help you out. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos and do a live stream every week. You'd be notified of all of that if you subscribe. Most importantly though, leave us a comment down below. Is there a modeling process you have questions about or is there a certain thing you're trying to do with SketchUp or layout or, or some other product that's connected to us that uh, you have questions on, uh, let us know in the comments so we can make a video to help you out. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when it's showing something you want to see. Thank you.